Hi everyone, Nigel here, Nigel's Modelling Bench, and as promised, here is a review of this great big glossy green box. It's still got the cellophane on, I haven't looked inside. I have built one of these before. Um, I built it just basically to sell. So I built it, sold it, didn't make any money on it, but I had the pleasure of building it. So I know the kit um, for, for a memory. Um, and basically I've left, the, left this completely sealed for you to see. So on the front here we can see it's basically realistic actions linked with flashes and sounds, M4 Sherman, 105 howitzer. So we've got in this kit, uh, it's the full option kit, so we've got full operational control, forward reverse, regular turning, pivot turning, turret rotation, raising, lowering of 105 howitzer. We've got a Duralman chassis. Pre-assembled gearbox, which is a shame, I like building gearboxes. Realistic suspension system, which is really cool. Pre-assembled tracks, which is not really cool because I like building tracks. Realistic commander, fig commander figure included, and maybe you'll see me have a go at painting a man. Never done that before. Uh, DMD T05 enables this machine to run with full action. Howitzer machine gun muzzle flash, headlights and tail lights light up. Real sound is reproduced and controlled by MFO2. Sound effects, engine starting sound, engine running sound, engine stopping sound, turret rotation sound, raising lowering sound of 105 howitzer, howitzer and machine gun fire sound. So basically every noise this tank other made, other than it, uh, it does. Now it says here it's 116 radio control tank, two channel operation with DMT control in it. This kit is 19 years old. It comes from 2001 um, and it was one of their first. I think the Tiger was the first. Um, but this, this is one of their first and it basically was designed to run with two channel radio because in those days, um, which many of you won't remember, two channel radio was expensive and four channel radio was like whoa it was forget it you know these days you know you can get a two channel four channel six channel radio system cheaper than a good night out it's, it's just crazy so um so basically if you look on the tamiya website you will see now that they have actually done um, a bit of an addendum to the instructions so you can use this with four channel the difference being you get all these functions but you have to actually stop and then switch over so for instance i don't know for, i can't remember exactly but um if you want to fire the machine gun rather than the main gun say you have to stop um select the left channel full left on the trim right channel full right on the trim and flick the right channel up or something that'll give you the the main gun and then you have to go back on that one and that one and then flick that one down and it'll give you the machine gun with with the um with the four channel you get it all on the move so but you know whatever whatever you have you have to be pretty quick with your fingers to use it so sometimes it's better to try and have a, a more channels and see if you could designate the extra channels to the to the stuff so for example you could be driving along turning left turning the turret and and use one of the switches on the top to um to fire the gun not sure that's possible but you know i, I um i'm just thinking out the box so i have got my sharp knife here and i'm going to cut the cellophane off so there we go like i said i've had this model since 2013 april the 29th 2013 was the date on the uh, delivery label so it's i've had it nearly seven years and uh, this is the first time I've opened it. So as you can see, the plastic's not playing game, playing ball. There we go. And this is the old fashioned style Tamiya box. Now, what's amazing with these old Tamiya boxes, if you're sort of new to this, they always came with a grab handle, you can see there. So you could carry the box like a suitcase. Now, if you look at the new kit they've just done, the Sheridan, um, not only does it not have the handle, it doesn't even have the the actual lid that I'm going to show you now. Now if you saw the, the review I did a couple of weeks back on the Pershing, why is this stuck under here? Come out, thank you. If you saw the review I did a couple of weeks ago on the Pershing, we still got a glossy box, try and get it in the camera there. Um, you'll see that it, it's this basically this wonderful box that opens up and I will show you in a minute you get this beautiful glossy image of the kit you're going to build and then what we've got here is basically an image of the model built up 
we've got an image here showing all the different functions that it's going to do you know basically moving around we've got the turret can be rotated the gun can be moved up and down here's our um, gearboxes built up down here I think they're still on camera yes um, Assemble front gearbox with two 380 motors, drives die cast sprockets, high power provides exciting running, suspension is duplicated by cool springs for smooth running and ex excellent manoeuvrability. Here we've got a, a nose on version of the tank. Here we can see the tracks and we've got some plastic parts there. MFO2, that's our um, sound unit I think, and then the control unit there, the TO5 control unit there. And then here we've got a great big speaker unit. As I say, this is one of the first sort of full option kits they did so it's not kind of advanced like the um the m1a1 or perhaps the um the leopard is i've got the leopard um unfinished because i haven't got any fiber optics for it so i need to get that sorted and finish that one off but um that's not about the leopard this is all about this one and we're going to build this one for you um and you can follow along and really really enjoy it Ho well hopefully you really enjoy it and um from the comments you've you've given me back from the review from the initial sort of review um sounds like you you, you want to see the whole the whole thing kit and caboodle so that's what i'll do so um let's without further ado close this box down and have a look inside as promised this is the beautiful glossy artwork you get inside the box this is the lid of the box as you can see you can fold the lid up and there's the box and there's what's inside the box so let's just put that down to one side it is one big box and it's all very very high quality fantastic Tamiya packaging you know how much I love my packaging and you know how much I respect companies that package stuff well um, so here we go this is all our parts so rather than just like a plastic kit you open it up and it's all like rolling around in a bag in bags this is basically what we've got. So what I'm going to do is move this box to one side. We'll get the bags open. We'll look at what's in there and we'll have a look in detail at what it all is. Right, here we go. So the first thing we see, well, let's get the light back over. The first thing we see is the speaker box. Now, Tammy are legendary, legendary at this. They make a box that fits inside the tank hull and speakers in there and you get a fantastic sound from basically what is a 50 pence speaker so um connector there with the cable and everything on which is all beautifully presented and done so that'll fit obviously in the back of the tank and you can see the the sherman shape there already so that can go back in the box there and then we've got this box here so let's get this one out and here we go so basically we've got our to5 and our mfo2 there i'm not going to get them out because we don't need to but you can see when I turn them over the sort of level of wiring we've got there's lots of connections and stuff to be made so that's all pretty cool and then in here again beautiful packaging we've got all our sprues so let's go through this in fact I don't need to open the bags we can look through the bags so there we go there's our um, 50 cal cooling jacket there ammo bin pivot mechanism so that sprue there is all about the um, the 50 cal and, and and that's basically it I think there's nothing else on there we don't have a, a drilled barrel but we can always draw that out that's not a problem apparently somebody um, said in the comments down below that I can get a um, an aftermarket gun for this so we'll have a look at that but to be honest looking at this it all looks pretty nice it's all um, got some nice rivet detail on there or bolt detail and there's some lovely detail on the barrel there with the grab handle and everything so Perhaps we won't bother with that. This here is our turret ring. Obviously, we're going to see this build 100%, so you're not missing anything. This is our turret ring there. Then we've got our little tiny sprue of clear parts. We've got headlight lenses, and then we've got our rear light lenses there, so they'll have to be painted red. Then we've got our commander figure. Where's his face? There we go. That's not too bad. 16th scale. Not too bad. We've got our hatch there with moulded on springs, so you might want to cut them off and replace them with something else. I'm not sure if I've got anything small enough, but we've got the interior detail there, which is the uh, the padding for the hatch. That's the rear bin, the rear box there for putting stuff in, and then these are all bits and pieces that, that go into the hatch. We've got the helmet there, and then we've got the um, 
That's either going to be the rack for the aerial or the rack for the machine gun. I can't remember now. We've got some more plastic parts here all bagged up. So we've got our front um, gearbox cover there with a lovely cast texture on it. Um, rear hatch cover there. Some stowage bins. Idler mountings or return roller mountings with the look of it. We've got the part here that goes across the top of the front gearbox cover there. One thing we have to do there is fill that in because that is actually part of that casting. So you don't really want to seam there so we'll get rid of that. We've got a mantlet there with our machine guns uh, poking out. Travel lock for the gun. We've got some tools here. We've got an axe. Big sledgehammer. Big spanner. And a, and a, a handle. For a pick pickfork I should imagine. Headlight guards which all look a bit thick and overscale. So we may look at actually replacing those. All the um, lifting eyes and everything. Remember these had to be lifted onto ships to bring them over here. And then we've got our 50 cal here. This is uh, very, very nice indeed. Obviously with the sprue attachment there, we've got no um, drilled barrel or anything. But bear in mind, this is a this is a very old kit now. And then here we've got um, three sprues, all identical sprues, and this is our road wheels. And look at this, we've got road wheels and then we've got separate rubber tires, which is a nice touch. So, you know, when I say having rubber tires is a nice touch, the reason I say that is this is a radio control model. If you don't have rubber tires, and the plastic is green, you can paint those tires as good as you like when you use the model. And if you use it outside and it gets any grit or anything, the, the black paint's going to wear away and you'll end up with green tires. So having rubber tires on a radio control model is a really nice touch. Um, apparently the Sheridan doesn't actually have rubber tires, so you're going to be in that sort of place of, you know, you're just going to scratch through the paint and um, end up seeing the seeing the green plastic poking through. So that's that box taken care of and that all goes back together. Obviously they put a little window in there here so you don't end up throwing the box away so you can see what's in there. So that's going to go in like that. Oh no the window is for the cabling I'm guessing. So that's going to go like that. Again we've got those control units there and there is some modifications we do here. We remove this cover here I think and do some modifications to make it run a four channel which will be cool. Right, so that's that box. Then we've got a the next box along. This is going to be an interesting one. We've got a bag here of tracks. So we've got our is it T28 tracks? I'm sure someone will tell me. Pre-assembled, which is unfortunate. You can see we've got metal pins, and they're going to be like ABS plastic links. So they're going to be extremely strong, extremely hard wearing, and because they've done the silver grey colour. Whatever you paint them, when you use them, are going to wear through to that silver grey colour. So they'll look quite accurate because they don't have rubber pads on them. So that's cool. This is the upper hull. Can I get this out? It doesn't want to come out. There we go. It doesn't want to come out at all. Right. So there is the upper hull. And you can see we've got a... Um, Lovely weld detail around the sides of the hull there. As I say, I'm not taking this out of the bag, but you're going to see it all when it's built. So, nice sort of um, hot rolled steel texture on there. No texture on the side, so we'll be doing something there. We'll add some texture on there. I, I know a guy's actually got one of these and um, in real life, and there is actually a, a texture on there. So it's like a, a hot rolled steel. It's almost a texture similar to that. But obviously they've done, they've done this in a, a two-piece mould, I'm guessing. Um, top and bottom so obviously they couldn't put detail there because the detail would have uh, you know you, you can't you can't have the mold coming this way off and have detail in the sides so that's the thing with your older technology guys and then here we've got our aluminium or Jeralmin hull which is nice ever so greasy so I'll give that a good degreasing and we'll give this a coat of um, acid etch primer. I've been out in the garage tonight and I've had a look and I have got some acid etch primer left from many years ago. So I'll give this a good degreasing, give it a key up with some scotch bright, put some acid etch primer on and then we can get some olive drab on there in it. I'm not sure, it's probably still going to scratch off because painting aluminium is always a problem. Um, but um, basically a good coat of paint will, uh, will look much better than bare aluminium. And there's nothing else in that box, so what we'll do is put this back together. If 
it's going to go back together. There we go. So we'll put that one back in. Then the next box we've got is this. Oh God, this one's heavy. I think we'll come to that one in a minute. Then we've got this box here. This box here contains our gearboxes. I don't need to get them out. You've all seen uh, Tamiya gearboxes. Oh, I will get them out. Here we go. They are very, very tough, very, very well built, beautiful gearboxes. Um, as you can see, all metal gears. There's no plastic gears in there at all. So a little bit of grease. And oh, actually, there is some plastic gears up here. These are on the low torque end next to the motor, so they'll be absolutely fine. We'll give them plenty of grease. Every as as you go through here, the torque increases. So um, it's good to see they've used metal gears down in here. And it's not like the more modern tanks where you have one motor driving and one for turning. These are actually two independent motors. So when you turn left or right, they will adjust their speed accordingly through the control unit. So that's those. I'm not going to try and put them back in the box properly. We'll put them to one side. Then we've got here, we have got a beautifully packaged sort of bubble wrap. Um, sorry, um, not bubble wrap, is it? What's it called? Oh, I can't think what it's called now. But you can see here we've got our idlers there with our, with our um, metal centre covers there. Our sprockets here going down through the middle. And then we've got all metal suspension arms, which is a nice touch in the stock kit. Many kits these days have plastic suspension arms. And then you go and spend a fortune on replacements because we know they're going to break. And then moving over here, we've got a box which is empty. And another box which is empty because if you buy this kit in Japan, you get all the radio gear with it as well. So underneath those little covers, We've got these sprues here, which are basically the um, add-on equipment. So we've got some ammo boxes, we've got some jerry cans, ammo box parts here. This is, this is actually this is storage boxes. Ammo box parts here, spare wheels, spare track links. Um, these are our brackets for the, the side fenders here. And then we've got some lights and bits and pieces of glue glue down there. So um, nothing much in there, really. And then here under the other side, this is under the smaller box, we've got the turret, which is your typical 105mm turret. You've got the weld seam here, which we'll, uh, we'll have to deal with. And then we've got some cast on numbers there. A bit disappointing, the cupola is, um, is just a piece of green plastic. I may well make a mould of that and cast it in clear. We'll see. We'll see if I do that. I may, I may well do that because that'll be a bit of fun. So um, there we go, there's that, that's the turret, lovely cast texture on there, could probably do with a bit of enhancement, so I'll show you how to do that. So we can go for that, as long as it's polystyrene, not ABS, it should work fine. Then we've got our sheet of decals here, so we've got lots of different options here, um, we've got some Reflective film there for something. I'm assuming that's going to be for the lights because I'm guessing it hasn't got mirrors We've got American stars here Insignia numbers and stuff and US Army badges and that different sort of markings for for different areas So yep, nice little decal sheet or Decal sheet and then we've got a a4 sort of size instruction book, which we'll have a look at in a minute so basically this box here this is going to be the one that I call the, the interesting box. I'm trying to find my knife, which I buried underneath all that stuff. So this is going to be full of interesting stuff. So I'll just literally pour it out for you. And there we go. As I say, lots of stuff. So we've got a piece of cardboard there. I don't know what that's for. So we've got, this is our, um, this here is the gun firing part. This is like a, it says here, danger, high voltage. Um, it's like it, it gets a charge and then, oof, there's the light. Um, extension lead for something or other. Oh no, that's the machine gun firing LED. Bag of tires there. 
got a B bag of screws and nuts and bolts and bits and pieces. A bag of screws and nuts and bolts and piece, bits and pieces. Here we've got a tube of thread lock. This is probably going to be dried up now because it's been in there so long. We shall see. We've got here a bag of ceramic grease, our typical Tamiya spanner. Got some snap on connector links there. Tiny little, this is a plastic screwdriver, that's for setting up your M05. Cable ties, double sided foam tape. So everything you could ever want in there. Then we've got a little gearbox unit here. This is going to be for the. That's either for the gun elevation or the turret rotation. I'm not sure. But I think to see one here. I think this is turret rotation and this one is gun elevation. Then we've got here some heavy cast parts. These are our actual suspension bogey mounts. You can see there that's the uh, looking at the side of the tank and then the wheels will be down here. So they're all metal as well. And they're quite weighty. That's a nice touch. Um, we've got our bag C here, which is lots of uh, nuts and screws and stuff, which is cool. Then we've got a bag here, which is little steel spacers and little lock nuts and stuff. I think these are going to be extenders for the... Um, for the return rollers perhaps and then a bag here this is very light so we've got some springs here this may be our suspension springs aluminium cylinders there i think that's for the um for the actual suspension and then here we've got a shock absorber bodies for the suspension units and then the little clamps and bits that go at the bottom for our pivots as i say if you can't see all this now in perfect uh, clear vision then um you'll see it all when i'm building it and then we've got some aluminium plates there. These are going to go in the front of the hole, basically to stiffen up the area or extend it for the um, for the drive. And then we've got here our little um, bronze bushings. And these are little stepped bushes. So we'll have to use them, I would imagine. And then here, there are little bearings. I've got a bearing kit for this, an aftermarket bearing kit, which I'll be using. And these are basically um, 850 oil light bushes. I'll be replacing them with with bearings connector here this goes into the battery and then these two here plug into the uh, the two control units beautifully done machine gun this is for the machine gun in the turret or the one in the hull I'm not sure but we've got the springs and bits and pieces and you can see the cooling jacket there and the actual machine gun itself we'll put LED inside there so that will actually flash when we fire it then we've got another cable here with fiber optics. Oh god, I love fiber optics. These are a lot softer than the ones that were in the um, in the leopard. So I'll have to see what I can do. Maybe get some more like this for the leopard and finish it off. But uh, yeah, and some aluminium foil in there. Rubber tires. I'm guessing these are going to be for our idlers. So cool. Another bag with a some sort of connector and electronic package. It's going to be for something or other. It's going to be for one of the, the, the uh, machine gun firing perhaps. And then we've got another extension cable here with the cables on the end. As you can see, it's all plug and play. And part of this, the whole objective of this is, I know that some people would love to build one of these, but they're kind of scared. And um, what I want to show you is just with some basic tools, you can build one of these. You really can. It's it's nothing to be afraid of. I've had people in the past ask me to, you know, build radio controlled cars for them to, because they, they they sort of feel they can't do it. And I've said to them, go and have a go. Here's my phone number. Give me a ring. If you get stuck, give me a call. Never heard from them. They've all built them, so it's it's not that bad. That's a little um, piece of fiber optic there for something that's going to be for going up inside the machine gun, no doubt. And then finally, we've got a bag here which has got some brass sleeves in it this is going to be bits and pieces for operating other bits and pieces and here's our antenna which we're not going to be using because these days we use 2.4 gig this is for the old um for the old fm radios so yeah that's our bag of bits so let me get all this put back in the box nice and neat and we'll have a look at the instructions right so that's all packed away so let's have a look at the instructions and I found that with the instructions, there's this kind of addendum sheet and it's saying this kit includes a light unit which differs from the one shown in the original assembly instruction manual. Please refer to these instructions for assembly. And um, yeah, it's got here the M4 Sherman, the M26, the KV1, 
And then we go over the page and we've got this is the M4 Sherman, which is this kit. And then we've got the M26 Pershing, which I've also got. And then we've got the KV1, which I don't have. So um be interested to see using this how this differs because I don't remember seeing this addendum sheet in my KV1, in my um, Pershing, sorry. I'm trying to see if there's a date on this printout and I can't see one. I can't see a printout on there, so not sure when this came in, but they've obviously got a different lighting system. So, um, yeah, we've got these lovely fibre optics, which I love so much. How they tend to glue them in? It doesn't, it just says put them in. So, uh, yeah, one of the one of the problems with the um, with the Leopard, it tells you to use rubber cement, whatever that is, and then when you put the rear lights in, they have to go through a sort of torturous angle, and then the length they tell you to come off isn't long enough, and oh, nightmare. So um, here we go. Here's the manual. Now, for some reason, it's a bit damaged on the edges. It's probably just the way it's packed, but um, there we go. So this is the instruction manual for the M4 Sherman. 105 howitzer so here we go we've got another addendum here this is for the dmd 205 extension unit and i'm not sure what this is saying is this going about the four channel oh there's the gearbox so if you want to take the gearboxes apart and rebuild them you can i've never seen that before in a time of tank kit in fact i might even take them apart and put them back together just to see <laughs> because i'm like that in fact if it's got bushes in it i may want to replace them with bearings so we shall see. So um, so there's that. Now it does say on the Tamiya website it shows you about how to make this work with a four channel radio. Um, but it says that there's no information in the kit about it. But I'm looking at that and it looks like it may be the, the same as they've put in the kit. So we shall see. Lots to learn. So basically going into the instruction manual. Just make sure you're all in shot. Yes you are. Um, here we've got some Japanese history about the tank and a nice picture here of one of the one of the early Shermans. Well, this is the early um, uh, HVSS suspension systems. And this is basically just instructions on health and safety and, you know, don't drive in the road. Don't use your tank where there's people flying planes. But of course, if you're not using FM radio, that no longer applies. Um, so it's telling you all about here about using NICAD batteries. I'm not sure what this is talking about. After the tank runs, the battery motor and FAT can become very hot, so you have to let them cool down. Another picture there of one of the first um, HVSS suspension tanks. I'm not a big Sherman aficionado. I know there's like M4A1, A3, EA, M4A1, A3, and God knows how many different um, different callouts there are for them. I'm not... I'm not I've got a few books on it, but I'm not that sort of official on it. So here's our radio. So it's telling us we've got four channel transmitter, two channel transmitter. We need a battery. We need a battery for the transmitter and we need a charger for that battery. So, um, and remember when you buy your radio gear, you need a receiver. I wouldn't recommend if you're going to build one of these, I wouldn't recommend getting the car type with the steering wheel. You need the stick type. I will go through different, um, radio gear. I have got three four or five i can't remember now i've got three four or five uh four and six channel radio sets i can show you so i can tell you about them if i read up on them and learn because i've forgotten more than i ever knew um so it's telling us here to, to paint we need these colors down here and then ts5 which is your olive drab which is an, um, an aerosol paint and then if you're going to use an airbrush get your um your compressors there for using your airbrush and they're advertising here the Tamiya brushes. Um, tools recommended. So you're going to want two screwdrivers, large and medium, some side cutters, a uh, pin vise for a two millimeter drill bit, tweezers, long nose pliers, a modeling knife. Here we go, synthetic rubber cement, whatever that is, plastic cement, and aluminium reinforced tape, cellophane tape, soldering iron and solder are also required. So we shall see where we need that. So here it's all uh, Japanese telling us about a radio gear. And I think what we'll find is over the page here, we had English. Yeah, so not quite sure what they're talking about there, with Japanese. And then we've got English down below here. So it's telling us all about a different um, 
radio gear we need and then here we've got some more information all about how to connect everything up and blah 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 we'll go through that when we build it symbols here for the different glues we're going to use so you can see um, G is synthetic rubber cement N is liquid thread lock the grey one is grease and the little hexagon with the leg coming off the bottom like the little Tamiya Q is your Tamiya paint colours um, and portions indicated in blue require cement if no cement is specified apply plastic cement so unless they're telling you to use super glue just use ordinary plastic cement remember this is old Tamiya so we've got an old style instruction book here which has got all the blue in it um, now it's going to be telling us here that when we actually paint here we go plastic paint cannot be used on metal parts without first applying a primer you've got Tamiya surface primer paint applied to a metal surface can chip as a result of a collision now I have got here in one of my drawers here we go this is Tamiya surface primer and it says it's for plastic and metal this is light grey um, this isn't the best stuff to be honest there's also here here's a white one um, they're not that good as etch primers to be honest and neither is the Mr Hobby um, Mr Metal Primer which is here I find that these aren't very good at all at etching into the metal so probably better off going with automotive which is what I'll be doing um, I've got some U-Pole number 8 acid etch primer in a can which I'll use through, um, through a, a, a car spray gun uh, there is also a um, you can get an aerosol of it as well it comes in a tall red can you get it from Halfords or whatever those etch primers are far better because they're because they're based for a, for a car they're on more of an industrial scale the, the Tamiya stuff I wouldn't recommend it so basically what it's going to tell us here the first thing we've got to do is spray this hull so that's where we're going to start we're going to spray the hull um, in the the primer I will then give it a coat of green around all the areas where there's screws and everything so there's green under the screws so if any of the screws come loose or move or scratch or whatever then they won't show through with the green same with the suspension mountings so and these will also need a metal primer because they're going to be metal so what I'll do is I'll go through the instructions first of all with all this bit pick out the metal parts and then we'll, we'll get it all painted but more of that when we start the build this is actually a build review so we can see here it's all pretty complex We've got little bits of grease going on. We've got the mountings being screwed into the um, into the aluminium hull. Some people moan about the aluminium hull. I actually like it. If you build the leopard, you get a plastic hull, which is ABS, and then you glue all this on with ABS glue, and it breaks off at a flick of a finger. So um, you, you're better off with this aluminium hull, really, which is what the Tiger's got, the KV-1's got, this has got. Uh, the Pershing has a plastic hull as well. I'm not sure if it has ABS or polystyrene but whatever so um here we go setting here build up these wheels paint the hull fit all your idlers and everything or return rollers and then we're straight into the gearbox fitting these little pedestals on the bottom bolting them into the um into the hull and then we're going to add these aluminium pieces on the side here which we saw in the review just now adding up these body mountings which the, so the, the actual hull can clip on and then we're going to start on our front suspension so this is our oil um, oil reservoir for our shock absorber going in there we're going to put that in and then bend the tab out and then we've got our springs so we've got our our fake sort of HVSS springs there going in and then we've got some coil springs going in to uh, to act like they're HVSS I think if you get a 135th scale men kit I think he's got them for real I'm not sure Darren Hedges mentioned to me I think he said they're in there for real um, then this is going to be adding up making up our suspension now so we've got our wheels going into bearings you've got these bushes you can replace them with bearings if you wish then we're going to build all that up together pinch all that together and then we're going to bolt them onto the actual hull itself add the front gearbox cover a couple of screws in the top there not quite sure how we'll get around that because i want to glue that plastic piece on there and fill the seam adding some detail onto the rear panel here so we've got a um, I'm thinking that is some kind of aerial mount perhaps and then we've got our exhaust going on here and we've got our air filters there um, idler suspension mechanisms there adding on the tracks 
it's telling us how to set the tracks up and then we're going to start to assemble our radio gear so we can set everything up so as you can see it's not too difficult it's fairly simple and then it's telling us here how to set our radio gear up for um for control of the dmd unit and then we're going to fit it all into the hull put the screws in attach our antenna here which we don't need so that piece there we can actually leave off and then we're going to add the um dmd unit in there connect everything up wire it all up as shown here don't forget to refer to your addendum because there's going to be differences and then here we've got our turret rotation gearbox here and the rollers going in adding in our light mechanism or the, the light, not light mechanism it's the wiring for the lights putting the led in for the machine gun there's that fiber optic cable i showed you if you remember and then adding all that in there and that is where you're going to refer to this because it's different you can see there we've got the difference in the different path of all the uh, lighting cables and everything adding some detail to the actual hull you've got your front fenders going on there which you'll probably choose not to use because you just don't see Sherman tanks with them on building up our light units here adding on the light guards as I say probably go to aftermarket for that because that's all very very thick and chunky purely because the kit's so old then we've got some light units going here into our back lights um, adding on some tools adding on the rear carrier shelf there on off switch going in and fitting the hull top then we're going to start on the turret so we've got our lifter mechanism here and we have our turret the, the, the turret location will be inside the hull i'm guessing and then we've got this if, if we're going to use our battle system which we're not um putting together our gun barrel putting the reflective tape in that area so we've got a two-piece gun barrel so there's a seam we'll have to deal with there oh my god it's going to be so difficult to deal with a seam <sighs> You don't need an aluminium barrel you can use the plastic barrel you can get rid of the seam you can make that round adding on the hatch on the top and then the hatch mechanism there putting some more electronics in connecting everything up building up our 50 cal machine gun on the top which is going there building up our commander figure spares and greeblies and accessories to go on the back of the tank there and then we've got some decals going on our um, Russian boxes. Um, no record, no decals for the um, jerry cans, but we have got decals for the ammo boxes there. And then we've got this is the optional battle system if you want to use it. And then instructions here on how to actually operate the tank because you've got so many functions coming from a two-channel radio. And I don't think they cover the four channel in here. It's like they say in the Tamiya website. Your, your, your four channel is not covered in here it's only two channel so going through all this you've got all your operation and troubleshooting and everything and then here we've got how to paint the figure which is nice um, I have actually seen a great little feature on YouTube there is a company I can't think what called and they show you how to paint a face and I will be using that I never paint faces I'll give it a go because it's 16 scale and then we've got our um, painting and decal application, which you can imagine it's just going to be olive drab. You've got your stars on there. So this one is 11th Armoured Division, Northwest Europe. This one is 10th Army Spring, Pacific Front. And then we've got 2nd Armoured Division, Free French Army. So I would probably do the Pacific one because that's where my Jeep went. And today being the 30th of March, 2020, my Jeep is 76 years old today. Built in Texas, shipped out on the 30th of March, 1944. So here we've got all our um, sprue callouts, and it's showing us parts not used. So that's interesting. That machine gun's not used. So uh, that's something for the spares box. And then we've got um, all our electronic parts here in our main hull. Um, requires two or four channel transmitter. Showing you here, if that was Japanese, it would say all that is in the box. So, yeah, worth remembering that. Um, suspension arms, metal sprockets there, and then lots and lots of metal parts in here. Grease and screws and all sorts of bits and pieces. And then we've got all the nuts and bolts there. So, not that difficult at all. Not that complex. Um, like I say, if you can put a piece of IKEA furniture together, I think you can build this. you just got to follow it carefully. And, um, and you'll see me build this 
coming up very very soon starting probably tomorrow um, as you can see here we've got light guards on here which are all very very thick and chunky very toy like I'm gonna look and see if I can get some aftermarket if any of you are watching this now and you know of aftermarket where I can replace all this please let me know give me a link or whatever thanks for watching this as I say we'll start a build on this probably tomorrow tomorrow being Tuesday the 31st of March and um, I'll see you all for that bye for now thanks for watching stay safe and happy modeling